Hello everyone, welcome to Universal Group of Institutions, Bangalore. Today we are going to explore two fundamental processes that shapes our planet, endogenetic and exogenetic forces. These forces operate at different scales and speeds, yet together they sculpt the landscape we see around us. Let's start with endogenetic forces. These are internal forces that originate within the earth. These are primarily driven by the heat and energy found inside the earth's core. These forces lead to creation of new landforms and the building up of earth's surface. For example, consider volcanic eruption and earthquakes. Both of these are driven by energy released from, from the earth's interior. When a volcano erupts, molten magma beneath the earth's crust reaches the surface and solidifies to form new land. Over the time, repeated eruptions can create large volcanic mountains such as Mount Fuji in Japan or Mount Loa in Hawaii. Similarly, earthquakes occur due to movement of tectonic plates which are large section of earth crust. When these plates shift or collide with each other, they can cause seismic waves that can shake the earth surface, leading to the formation of features like fault lines and mountain ranges. A well-known example of this is the formation of the Himalayas, which are still rising as the Indian plate collides uh, with the Eurasian plate. Now, let's shift our focus to endogenetic forces. Unlike endogenetic forces, these originates from outside the earth crust. They involve uh, external process that wear down and reshape the earth's surface. These process, these forces are driven by agents climate like wind, water, ice and temperature changes. For instance, weathering is a crucial endogenetic process, exogenetic, sorry. This is the breaking down of rocks into smaller particles through physical, chemical or biological means. Over the time, the breakdown of rocks contributes to the formation of soil. Imagine how a big boulder gradually crumbles into smaller stones and then pebbles and eventually into the particles that form soil. Erosion, another exogenetic process, is the movement of these broken down materials. Agents like wind, river, glacier and ocean waves transport these sediments from one place to another. This process can carve out spectacular landforms such as canyons and valleys. For example, the Grand Canyon that was carved over millions of years by Colorado River, illustrating the power of water erosion. Now, let's compare these two types of forces. Endogenetic forces are like the builders. They create and uplift the earth's surface. In contrast, exo exogenetic forces act like the sculptures. They wear down, transport and reshape the land. This constant interplay between building up and the wearing down is what creates the dynamic shape we see on the earth. Take for example, a mountain range formed by endogenetic forces. Over the time, Exogenetic forces like wind and rain start to wear it down, carrying away sediments to form plains and river deltas. The Mississippi River Delta, for example, has been shaped by the deposition of sediments carried by river from upstream. In conclusion, both endogenetic and exogenetic forces play a vital role in shaping our planet. Endogenetic forces like tectonic activity build new features and landforms. While exogenetic forces like weathering and erosion sculpt and modify these landscapes. The continuous interaction between these forces ensure that our, our earth remains a dynamic and ever-changing planet. Thank you for listening. I hope you gained a deeper understanding of how our earth surface is shaped by these fast-changing process. We will continue this series of geomorphology, which is useful for your UPSC prelims as well as the geography mains. So stay tuned. And if you have any queries, I would be happy to answer them in the comment box. Thank you so much and see you in the next one.